UPAC viewers, welcome to the February edition of Bayer TV News. I'm Dominique Mims. And I'm Nick Collum. We're covering all the top news across the UPAC campus. In today's show, we will be featuring stories on a campus quiz program, the latest What's Up Wednesday, an art showcase on campus, black student union events, a profile of an adjunct professor, campus sporting events, and more. For our top story of the day, the FMA department is in preparation for their fifth annual film festival. The U Pike Film and Media Arts Program is accepting submissions for this year's film festival happening in April and taking place in the University Booth Auditorium. This is the fifth annual U Pike Film and Media Arts Festival coming up uh, this April 4th through 6th. And we're very excited this year because we're also having the second year of our screenplay competition. And our screenplay competition, we're open to short scripts, feature length scripts, and this is open to anyone, including U Pike students. So those that are interested should reach out to me and we'll uh, show them how they can enter and I can even give them a discount code where they can submit for free, whereas otherwise we, we charge. Students have been in full stride of writing, filming, and editing for this year's event. A lot of people think it's just for students but you can also submit as a professional. You don't have to be enrolled in a high school or a college to submit. Be sure to participate in attending or submitting to the UPike Film and Media Arts Film Festival, but act quick because all submissions are due on Sunday, February 24th. Reporting from the Community Technology Center, I'm Kyle Nagy with Bear TV News. Most of us have probably seen Jeopardy! on television before, but few will ever get the chance to play on the actual show. However, last month, a group of UPAC students got to get a taste for the Jeopardy! experience right here on campus when Professor Mike Holcomb hosted his own version of the event. On Tuesday evening, January 29th, Dr. Michael Holcomb and UPI campus-wide hosted the Numbers Jeopardy game in Chrisman Auditorium. The event was a Jeopardy-style game, all based around numbers, in pop culture, sports, science, and other categories. The game was structured the same as the actual show, including a final Jeopardy round that determined the winners. The top three winners received gift cards to Buffalo Wild Wings. The person that took first place was James Anthony, we spoke with him about his feelings on the event. It, it feels pretty good because I, I brought my kids as a, a guest and, uh, and so they're always giving me a hard time at home because I, I watched the, the real show and uh, so at first I wasn't going to compete but I'm glad I did now. For Bear TV News, I'm Dustin Fidel. Congratulations to all the winners. If you missed the event, don't worry. Dr. Holcomb plans to host Numbers Jeopardy again next semester. Do you enjoy playing video games or have a natural talent for it? Esports may be just the program for you. Our sports reporter, Willie McLeod, had a chance to speak with the leader of the esports program. I'm the interim coach, which means uh, temporary. I've been interim for about a year. Uh, we've really been patient when trying to find the best fit for our program. Um, it's a very diverse program, so basically esports is more of a department than a specific team. Uh, we've got several rosters for a lot of competitive video games, fully scholarship funded, backed by the university. We've got all the best bells and whistles. Specific titles that we play currently are Hearthstone, Overwatch, and League of Legends, if you or anybody watching is familiar with those. And the great thing about esports is that we're always expanding. With our generation, there's so many people that play video games, and there's so many people that are talented, and they're so smart. These are highly motivated guys, and they really like... They've got a fire for what they do. They're competitors. We have varsities, and then we've got like JV rosters for each game. Overwatch is kind of like Call of Duty. It's a first-person shooter. We've got people that come from, I, I, we flew a guy in from Missouri, transferred uh, League of Legends. That we brought a dude from California last semester. I know it sounds silly, but we get on these computers and we battle. We scrap. We practice hard every day. We have our workouts, we study, so as a group, everything. You know, everything's for the team. And some people don't understand video games, but understand that there's people who, this is their fire and that they want to be the best, you know what I mean? Hopefully this competing season, they see that it's fire that earns respect. You know, all the hard work should pay off and they get the visibility that, it, that they deserve. For more information regarding eSports program, contact Kelly Porter at davidporter at upike.edu. When it comes to free food and fun on campus, the What's Up Wednesday event series has it all. Reporter Sean Haynes had the chance to attend one of these events recently and has all the details. On Wednesday, January 30th, the UPI Business Office hosted What's Up Wednesday. What's Up Wednesday is a series of events on Wednesday evenings for students to come and enjoy. Events are always hosted by UPI groups and organizations, and food is always served. 
who spoke with the student about his thoughts on What's Up Wednesday in general. Well, it's always a good time. People always show up, gives you something to do around campus, so it's not just the routine thing, same, same, in, like, same old thing every day. You get to come out, have fun, meet new people, because everybody comes. We also spoke with another student about what he thought of the Mexican food and how it compared to food from his home state. Well, it's pretty neat here having Mexican food coming from the Los Angeles area um, and coming out to Pikeville. It's not something I get every day, so having Mexican food over here, it's kind of like a little taste of home. It's not carne asada, but you know, it's still some pretty good, pretty decent Mexican food out here. The next What's Up Wednesday event will be February 13th. The event is a Valentine's Day build a friend. The event will be located in the student lounge. Reporting from the lounge, I am Sean Haynes, Bear TV News. Check out the events calendar in the Presence app for future What's Up Wednesday events. Hopefully most of you have gotten to know your professors at UPike fairly well, but it still may come as a surprise to you that not all instructors work full time for the university. Last week I interviewed one such instructor. When most students think of their favorite professor, they normally don't imagine one who only teaches a single class once a week, such as Daryl Rife. I've been doing it for seven years, and it is a little time consuming because I do have a full-time day job, but uh, every Tuesday night, you know, for the past seven years, I've been able to impart some film knowledge on a lot of students, and mm -hmm. I, it, I don't feel like it does take up time. It's, it's a pleasure, actually, to mm -hmm. be able to do that. But how exactly does Rife handle his classes as an adjunct professor? What type of learning experience does he offer his students? Where I teach now advanced film studies in the mm -hmm. spring, that's kind of, I've guinea pigged a few classes and right now I'm teaching horror films for the second time mm -hmm. and I feel like I have a better understanding of how that class can operate, but uh, it's a seamless transition I think from, from fall to spring. It takes probably the more hardened film student to want to take a, mm -hmm. an advanced film studies course and we get to delve into topics that I really find interesting and really want to teach. I've taught one Japanese film, horror film, and a, and a kind of a survey world cinema. So these are things that interest me. Even though he teaches part-time, he is still seen as a valuable asset in the eyes of university officials. They've kept me here for seven years and they continue to want to keep me and I, they've been nothing but supportive of me and from all facets of the of the university, from administration to fellow staff and it's been great. If you are in search of fun campus activities this month, the Black Student Union has you covered as we all prepare to celebrate and learn more about Black History Month. Yeah, um, that's going to be on the fourth. On Thursday, January 24th, the Black Student Union held the first meeting of the spring 2019 semester. This meeting provided members with information regarding a tentative plan for campus and club events in the coming months. The main topic of discussion was Black History Month. In 1976, Black History Month officially became a month-long celebration with colleges and universities across the United States celebrating. UPike is no exception. The Black Student Union here is on campus. It represents the black culture uh, and also it gives a voice to black students here. So um, we're a group that just likes to uh, have fun. Uh, but we also hold events. Uh, black History Month is in February, so we'll be holding events all throughout the month. The Black Student Union has several events planned on campus to commemorate black culture, on campus and in the community. UPAC students will be given a unique opportunity to view a mobile museum coming to campus. The Campus Activity Board is working hand in hand with us kind of celebrating Black History Month. Um, so they have a mobile museum coming on February, I believe the 21st. Um, it's gonna be an HPE, it's gonna be at 11, so no one has class that day. Um, well, at that time that day. Um, so you can just come up there, check some things out. Um, we're just asking everyone to kind of come and just experience, you know, the museum. Reporting for Barry TV News, I'm Dominique Mims. More information on BSU events can be found on the Presence app or the website at upike.presence.io. The Upike Weber Art Gallery is currently hosting an exhibit featuring a homegrown artist. The work of Christopher Epling, a Upike alumnus and current adjunct instructor, is currently being featured in an exciting exhibit. Epling is an accomplished children's book artist and newspaper cartoonist. He has worked on over a dozen books and even teaches a class on digital imaging here at UPike. Christopher Epling took a moment to talk with us about the exhibit. As an illustrator, uh, I live here in Eastern Kentucky, so I work from here. And what a lot of folks don't realize is that there are careers in publishing, uh, working as graphic design and illustrator, small 
regional publishers. So the process of creating a, even one page in a book is, is, is different each time, but usually what it starts out with is uh, just scribbles, dashes and marks and circles and squares because I read a book called Writing with Pictures, which is the title of the exhibit. And in the book, he talks about how the composition, where you place things, matter. So I think about composition, where things will be on a page, how they'll be arranged, uh, where the words will be, and I sketch it out. And then from there, I design. Design, 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 refine, design. It's a long process, but uh, usually it gets to something at the end. I want to show students that the process is sometimes more important than the final piece because how you get to where you're going, it, it matters. And that's a real thing in life, and we jump over it a lot. If anyone would like to get in contact with me, uh, you can email me at eplingillustrations at gmail.com. The exhibit will remain open through March 8th and is open at various times throughout the weekday. To get to the Weber Art Gallery, just park in the Pikeville parking garage and take the second floor pedway directly across Hamby Boulevard to arrive directly there. Now it's time for the sports update with Willie McLeod. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bear TV News Sports Update, and I'm here to provide you with the latest U Pike Sports news on February 5th. The archery team held an open practice in preparation for their journey to the national competition in Las Vegas at the regional conference held in January. The team had a remarkable performance finishing second place overall and beating all previous school records. We'll have the results for you on the national competition in our next show. U Pike men's and women's basketball battled Georgetown in the whiteout game at the Expo Center on January 26. The women's team had a strong start, shooting 50% from the floor at halftime. The Bears were leading the Tigers 35 to 33. The Tigers opened up the second half taking the lead, but the Bears fought to pull out an 11-point victory over the Tigers with a score of 86 to 75. The men's team started strong, but couldn't get a lead on the Tigers at halftime. The Tigers led the Bears 39-35. Georgetown shot 54% from the floor, extending their lead over the Bears. The, Bur the Bears fought hard, but the loss to the Tigers with a score of 93-74. In other news, both U Pike bowling teams competed in the Mid-South Conference late last month and finished in the top four. The women's team took a second-place victory which scored them their seventh consecutive, consecutive MSC regular season championship. Both teams will compete at the Hoosier Classic in Indianapolis on February 16th and 17th. That's all the sports news that fits the bear. I'm Willie McLeod, and that's your sports update. Thank you, Willie. That wraps it up for today's show. This has been your February edition of Bear TV News. Thank you for watching. I'm Dominique Mims. And I'm Nick Collum. Join us next month for more continued coverage on all things UPike. And stay warm, fellow bears.